Welcome back to Ginger Kit Outdoors. Basically the uh, probably only YouTube channel that brings you rainware and firearms together in a lot of different videos. Today one of my main focuses is going to be, for right now, the Old Style Retro by Farmer Rain. Now this jacket is going to be old stock. I'm going to be listing these on eBay to help them out to get rid of some of the old stock since they've got a newer design with different uh, materials. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about why we're really here. I'm going to be shooting the AR-10 TAC-18 versus my 18-inch Mossberg MVP. Now the MVP and the AR-10 here are both going to utilize the Magpul Standard style magazine. So this one will not only use the Magpul magazines, AR-10, SR-25, anything like that, but it will also accept uh, M14, M1A, that pattern magazine as well, which make these pretty interesting. A cool little rifle, great handy little uh, bolt action if you need something for like blinds, anything like that where you don't have a lot of room, something that'd be easy to manage. I've got this outfitted with a Leopold 3.5 to 10. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get to shooting. I want to see how much of a difference there is in velocity out of an 18-inch bolt action versus an 18-inch gas-fed uh, semi-automatic similar to what this AR-10 is. Now this is going to be an impingement system, not a piston system. I do not have an 18-inch piston gun. I don't have any piston ARs or any piston rifles for right now in 308. So with that being said, let's go ahead, load up some magazines, and get to shooting these rifles to see what the velocity is. Okay, I should point out that I do have videos on both of these rifles. I'm loading up nine rounds of AAC. It's loaded up with 168 grain Sierra Hollow Point, one of their match kings. Got that set way too high. 200 and let's crank it back to about six hour. There we go. And that one's gone. Ooh, that last one was gassy right in the face. Now that, good representation as to why you should always wear Ear Pro. Ear Pro, of course, duh. And uh, Eye Pro. I don't usually wear Eye Pro when shooting optics because I can't see through them very well. I found that out the uh, hard way. It's really hard for me to actually focus on the reticle. Everything is blurry, so I don't know if it's something with my vision or what, but I can get a lot better op uh, picture through the scope and that's even with adjusting the diopter on it and everything else than what uh, I can if I'm trying to wear glasses. So any kind of like just clear glasses, my sunglasses, anything like that. So, And I did notice that my vision on my right eye is a little bit blurrier than the left eye. So yeah, all the perks are getting old. But that's nine rounds and I managed to obliterate both swinging targets I have downrange at 200 yards. So I'm going to go ahead and eject the magazine, gun locked open, over here, hit the back button, and end session. Going to go, make sure everything uploaded to the phone, and then set up the, uh, the next rifle. Got the last 10 rounds of the AAC ammo loaded up. Gonna shoot at the 100 yard, uh, 100 yard steel target I got set up. It is a, I forget what the actual setup of it is. It's like uh, nine inches wide, 12, 14 inches tall, something like that. Looks like a two thirds D zone, but it's a little bit like uh, more miss oddly shaped. So my four inch target and eight inch target, I have at 200 yards. Neither one of those are going to be operable until I can get some more little S-hooks or find a better way to mount those because the 308 from the AR just spun them around enough where it uh, 
deformed and launched the targets off of the chains. So, okay, I guess before I get too involved in this, turn my Garmin back on. New setting, rifle, 168. Okay, and again, 10 rounds are loaded up. AAC 168 grain Sierra bullets loaded up in these. Take some velocity readings. Man, that thing's a thumper though. So used to shooting stuff like the AR-10. It's, it's really more impressive, not so much as if this has a higher velocity than what the AR-10 does. It's just how much like smoother that AR-10 is and a little bit heavier package being gas operated, of course. But versus something like this, which this is really punchy. My 24 inch uh, heavy barreled Savage doesn't kick near as hard as what this thing does. But again, this is a Mossberg MVP. It's got an 18 inch medium heavy profile barrel on it. Um, and it uses a AR-10 or a M14 magazine. So I'll go ahead and save these findings and my session. And I'll go ahead and make sure it uh, pulled over to the phone and then I can do like a little bit of a recap after I look at everything. So again, this is the Farmer Range. Shiny White Retro. This is the old stock in their old shiny bio vinyl. These are going to be available on eBay. Um, this one is a size large. Of course, what I've got for sale is a small, medium, extra large, double XL, and triple XL. Um, we sell these. I'm going to see what else they have on hand for the old shiny white, and we'll continue to uh, list them for them until I can hopefully get them sold for them. They're a great manufacturer out of Sweden, and They've done uh, just fantastic things for me when it comes to like different rainwear that I wanted custom made. Anything for basically a lot of like outdoor activity, stuff like this that I do. So I'm very appreciative of that, uh, of them. So what did we find out today? So an 18 inch Mossberg bolt action versus an 18 inch Armalite AR-10. Surprisingly with the, uh, the spreads and everything, standard deviations, maximum spread, all that stuff configured. The average velocity on the AR-10 was 16 feet per second faster than the bolt action. Now, is this just maybe a product of today, today's conditions, everything there? Maybe this rifle did not favor the, uh, the temperature today. It's up to about uh, maybe 65, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. A light wind, um, sunny out. It's hard to say. I don't know all of the science behind it personally. But between the two, the semi-auto, which has been touted at uh, supposedly being a slower cartridge, not cartridge, I should say, but a slower action because it is actually siphoning the gas that's used to propel that bullet out of the end of the barrel in uh, the barrel itself in order to run the action. Now, arguably so, it could very well be that at 18 inches, that uh, cartridge is already out of the barrel before any of the actual cycling takes place which is quite possible I'm sure there's high-speed guys with like a, oh uh, what is it uh, ballistic high speed they've got a whole bunch of stuff they probably got videos out there showing if the actual bullet is exiting the barrel before the action is starting to cycle because at that point if it is then it's not going to be siphoning off any of the actual velocity that's already been generated by that bullet once it leaves the barrel there is no more stuff pushing it behind. So if it's sucking the, uh, the gas propellant off by the time it's exiting the barrel and it still has plenty of uh, gas when it's exiting in order to cycle, then there won't be any issue with any degradation in gas pressure when it's using it to cycle the action to basically impede on the velocity of the cartridge. So, I mean, that being said, the other thing I will point out where just shootability, this thing after 10 rounds, I was done shooting it. I mean, that it, it was getting to be a little, little punchy there at the end. This, I mean, this is just a pleasant gun to shoot. 18 inch, of course, it is probably about a good six pounds heavier than what this bolt action is. For packing, yeah, you could definitely want to pack the, uh, the Mossberg around more than you're going to want to try to lug this thing around. But 
lot of this stuff, the more you carry it, it just doesn't feel as heavy, especially if you're more tuned like I was running around with the uh, MCX Spear LT. After a while, I thought, wow, this really is heavier than an AR. The more I carry it, I'm like, this isn't any worse than what like the Springfield Saint I have is. So, I mean, sure, if it's saying right on the box that it's, you know, X amount of pounds and that's like how many more ounces than something else, it's all going to come down to how much you're carrying it, what your, the rest of your loadout is. I don't run loadouts. I maybe have a handgun on me and that's it. But different scenarios call for different uh, equipment. So all that needs to be taken into consideration when you're looking at firearms. Personally, I wish this would have had a heavier barrel on it, the, the Armalite. The original Armalites did have a full heavy contour barrel back behind the gas block, which was basically an uh, nothing that was machined down all the way out to the gas block. It was a larger diameter than what the gas block was and then they jumped it down to a uh, 0 0.750 past that, but with Armalite has now switched hands several times. Um, this one was manufactured in, I believe, Arizona. Where is that? At? Yep, Phoenix, Arizona. Now everything is manufactured in Texas, if I remember correctly. So, sure, uh, I believe it's SA C manufacturing or industries, whoever is the parent company that owns them, they're moving around, finding the best spot to manufacture them at. I've had no issues with this thing whatsoever since the initial rifle I received. It has been sent in for warranty once now, and they were back and had it back to me within a, a week after sending it in, and I have had no issues with it whatsoever since I've gotten it back from them. So they were able to determine what the product, what the problem was as soon as I sent them pictures of what it was doing to the brass and not cycling. and they pretty much knew exactly what they wanted to do as soon as they received it, had it back, no complaints whatsoever. So yeah, it's definitely one thing you got to look at is the warranty on a firearm. If they're not going to help you after you get done spending like, you know, almost $1,800 on it, then what good are they? But these guys were just phenomenal. And like I said, with it being Arizona, and by then I think they were manufacturing in Texas, so it was probably the same people possibly, but uh, not necessarily all the same individuals that had been working with it previously. So. Yeah, excellent to see their warranty is just top notch. Mossberg, of course. I mean, I've had to warranty some stuff with shotguns before and have had no issues with them. But Mossberg is such a such a bulletproof manufacturer. I mean, you know, whatever you buy is gonna work and if it doesn't, they'll make sure that they'll do everything they can to make it work. So yeah, with that being said, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video here on the testing the velocity difference between an AR-10 versus a bolt action uh, 308 both of them 308 both of them 18 inch barrels and both of them run in the AAC ammunition so that's the last of that AAC I got to do a little bit more testing to figure out what I'm gonna go forward with from here I don't know if I'm gonna keep shooting AAC or try to find like another manufacturer there uh, standard deviations between these two for some reason this one if I remember correctly was like 20 some feet per second and this was like 7.2 so I mean that's how oh, that was really good so again maybe it's just this rifle the barrel is just a little bit more tighter if you will and generates more gas pressure and more velocity than what the Mossberg is it's really hard to say I figured the bolt action was gonna go faster but it didn't so yeah with all that being said if you're looking for any good uh, rainy day wear, outdoor apparel, anything like that, go check out Farmer Rain. They have uh, probably some of the best rain wear that is currently available. So after that, pretty much going to conclude this video. So far I've had a, a lot of use out of these little that little garment. It's a little pricey, but if you're going to be working up loads and stuff like that and trying to set up ballistic calculators, probably the best investment that you will ne make next to the uh, price of the software.